What's up guys, it's James Disciple Johnson. If you think the Hail Mary is evil, bad, and wrong, you should watch this video. Hey guys, it's James Disciple Johnson, national president and founder of Disciple Christian Motorcycle Club, and I'm taking some time to ride my motorcycle today and consider the prayers of the Holy Liturgy. The Holy Liturgy, uh, or the uh, the Rosary, is the series of, of prayers that breaks down the doctrine of the faith, and they, it comes from the scripture. And so over the years, people have been taught the Holy Liturgy, hey, memorize this, this is the basic doctrine of the Bible, we want you to know it. And one of the prayers in there is the Hail Mary. Now, if you grew up Baptist like I grew up, you think the Hail Mary is bad stuff, bad juju. Don't say it. But I want to share with you my perspective of the Hail Mary. I think it's a beautiful way to remember the, the Holy Virgin Mary, who was the mother of God. And I think it's so important. First of all, let's just say the prayer. Now, the first half is straight from the scripture. Anybody could quote the scripture and say this. So let's just say the prayer, and then we'll go back and talk about what it means. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Now, uh, the Hail Mary, as you know, the first half of that, that uh, scripture, uh, that prayer comes straight from the scripture. That's what the angel, the, the angel who was sent to tell Mary about the virgin birth said to her. And so that's straight from Scripture. So anybody can quote that. There's nothing evil, bad, or wrong about Scripture. And so uh, I think that uh, to, to say the Hail Mary, that first half of the prayer, is a wonderful and beautiful thing. So let's go through that again. Hail Mary, full of grace. And I just think of the little Virgin Mary. I think of her as much like my daughter. She would have been young uh, in that culture. And so she, she would have been a sweet little innocent virgin girl who's getting married to a guy. And now this angel comes to her to tell her this, this thing. But he calls her full of grace. He actually gives her a compliment on her womanhood. Isn't that interesting? You know, as a pastor, I've been taught that we never compliment ladies between the age of 8 and 80. But here this angel took a moment to compliment the, the Virgin Mary and to say that she's full of grace. And I just imagined her as this young, graceful, beautiful, sweet thing. Um, and, and just, I, I see a real beauty there in how the angel talks to her. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. She must have been a devout, sweet, good, uh, you know, God-loving person for him to say that. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Uh, the, the Virgin Mary received the unusual position of being the mother of God, of having the Holy Spirit overshadow her. And a really a terrifying thing for a young girl because she was a virgin, she's getting married, and now she's going to have this baby, and she has to convince Joseph that she's not uh, going around and out of wedlock and, and uh, you know, a, a prostitute or a hooker or some horrible thing. You know, she's not some, some girl that's out there running around promiscuously. And so what a hard thing for a young girl to convince a man of. And, and you know, later on the angel also appeared to Joseph, but uh, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. We know that the Holy Spirit overshadowed uh, Mary in the Immaculate Conception, and uh, that he put the seed of, of Christ, of God himself, inside of, of Mary, and, and that a baby grew from that. Uh, and what a wonderful uh, and, and miraculous thing that is. Uh, and, and that she bore Christ himself. And I think that's important for us to remember, you know, um, that, that God had a, a mother, that she loved him, that she suckled him at her breast, um, that she, she rose him up, that she wiped his little butt, that she was a mother to a baby, to the baby Jesus. And what a wonderful sacrifice her life was to him. Uh, and then later he sacrificed his life for her and for everyone else when he died on the cross. Um, and then the next part of the prayer, Holy Mary, Mother of God. So we know that the Bible calls us a holy priesthood. The Bible says that the, the blood of Jesus washes us clean and makes us holy. And so that would include Mary. So Holy Mary, Mother of God. And I always take a minute when I pray that prayer to remember that she is the Mother of God. That she literally played the function of Mother. You know, I didn't have a mother. I didn't. I, I, I long for that connection, actually. And uh, so Jesus had a mother who loved him. And people forget... Uh, as we honor Mary, we, they forget that Mary watched her son die, and she could do nothing about it. She watched him be beaten. She watched him die on the cross, 
You think about that, man. That's that's a powerful thing to watch your baby boy die on the cross. I couldn't do it, man. I'd have been fighting on his behalf. They'd have had to kill me too to watch my baby son die. But there was Jesus dying on the cross before his mother, and that's a, a beautiful thing for us to remember. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And I think uh, this is the biggest point of doctrinal contention that the church comes into in this prayer is that we're asking Mary to pray for us. And uh, I'll remind you that, um, that uh, we definitely know that we can ask people to pray for us. That Mary is not dead, that she uh, lives on in heaven. Uh, we assume that she was a Christian. We assume that Mary's in heaven, right? <laughs> and so uh, we know that people, there's conversations between people that are in heaven and hell uh, with God or with other people on earth. And so we're not praying to Mary. We're not uh, asking Mary to do anything for us. We're asking Mary to pray for us like we'd ask our pastor to pray for us. And uh, I think that there's nothing wrong with that. I know that I was taught that you're praying to Mary, and of course, uh, any Catholic theologian will tell you that you can't pray to Mary. You can only pray to God or Jesus. Uh, but uh, we can definitely talk to those around us and ask them to pray for us. You know, I don't know 100% where I stand doctrinally on that, but I do know that I love to honor the mother of the Lord. I'm James Disciple Johnson, national president and founder of Disciple Christian Motorcycle Club, pastor of Disciples Way Christian Coffee House. And I'll tell you something, uh, if you believe in what we're doing, if you enjoyed this video, please do take a moment to hit the like, share, and subscribe buttons. Uh, take a moment to uh, search Disciple Christian Motorcycle Club and James Disciple Johnson on Facebook, YouTube, and on the Googles. Go to DiscipleChristianMC.com, buy a t-shirt, read about our ministry, learn about what we do. When you see, when you see videos from us, take a moment to pray for us. Pray the blessing of God on our lives. Pray, pray the blessing of wisdom and encouragement. Uh, and pray for us financially. God bless you. Thanks for watching. And have a great day.